Welcome back friends to another rainy day in the homestead. I found a pretty amazing deal on Facebook Marketplace. Man, since I got a good deal on that Snap-on box, I've gotten addicted to them. <laughs> I've been going through them every morning over coffee, but I found this Mac set of drawers that was brand new for a fraction of what it cost new. These cabinets are actually, I found out, made by a company called Lista. And Lista makes boxes that are probably even better than snap-on boxes. The drawers are rated, I think, for 400 pounds. A worthy bank of drawers deserves a worthy base. I thought we would do a traditional cribbed base, that that would be super, super strong and kind of uh, interesting. Look, a fun fact about cribbing, I actually looked up some things I didn't know that might be int of interest to you. Cribbing is typically going to be a 4x4 four four or a 6x6 six six, traditionally. And the rule of thumb is it should not exceed the height of its depth. So if it goes three feet deep, you wouldn't want to go any more than three feet of height, just as a general rule. The early uh, mining industry uh, used this heavily for shoring up uh, uh, the roofs of deep mines. Uh, the first railroads used this for uh, the bridges and trestles. The fasteners for the pedestal I'm going to use are these six inch timber screws. All right, brothers, let us begin. This is the raw material. We've got set up here with the miter saw. I've got a stop set up and we will start our production line. We've got these big old timber screws right there, those six inchers that are a Torx, like a 35 or 4, 30, it looks like a 30, 35. I've got the little Milwaukee fuel, my little impact gun, which I really love with a little tiny battery. This is the M18. Do you think it'll drive these big old monsters? I mean, it's, I've got the bigger battery, the 3.0. I've got 6.0s for it as well, but let's see how it stacks up against the M18, the stubby impact. This one's in 3.8s. Ah, an A for effort, but no moss. On a bit of a side note, this is the first time I've had a chance to really use this M18 impact wrench, this stubby. Phenomenal. All those screws on one battery and the charge that's left is what? Half. That's pretty amazing. It got hot, though it got too hot to touch. It still is. And I work pretty slow. This is not something you'd want to just go screw after screw after screw with no rest, but man, it is very powerful. It's a very good tool. Thank you, Jariah. You're very welcome.
That whole table of tools easily fit in five drawers and there's a boon. There's an extra one. I got an extra drawer for my good knives. Granddad's old hunting knife. I <laughs> just pulled it out here. Still got blood and bone on it from the last elk butchered. This one was mine growing up. Same knife, a well, similar knife, but the pixie. And then my, um, my two bush crafting, bush crafting knives. Actually, I use these in wood, woodworking quite often. And then my good sharpening, my leathers and my favorite stones and my Japanese water stones. Here's how it'll work in the future. Project you want to do, I'm going to take the tools out that I want systematically, just like that. Measuring tools, saw, whatever, all of that stuff can park in the well. And then when I'm done, just put them back in the drawer. That'll keep my bench clear for other projects. What I find, what I, what I, the habit that I just haven't been able to break is, is this need of always sitting something down on a table. It's like, it almost goes against nature, a table in the shop without something on it. I mean, it just, it's incredible how it attracts uh, everything from everyone. People just automatically sit things down on the table. And I guess what I'm striving for here is these tools have a place that um, the table can be kept clear. And if there's something on the table, then something's wrong. Then when you need to do something or you want to work on that table, then you have all sorts of options. That's why the big cart, uh, let me show you. That's why I switched over to the big cart. Now with big cart, you can create that galley space anywhere. All of your, you know, the 90% of your tools, the ones you're going to use 90% of the time are all going to be in here with a work surface. And sometimes you want to work on a wood surface and not metal, maybe when it's cold or be able to roll your tool chest with a good workbench on it over by the wood stove is nice on those cold mornings when, before, when the shop, you know, takes hours for the shop to heat up. Um, so that's, that's nice. I, I tend to like, prefer to work on a wood surface, uh, cleaning guns, or if you have something as delicate that you worry about getting marred, it's, it's just nicer. Um, there's a time for steel, there's a time for wood, but that's it. Pretty controversial. <laughs> I took some pictures of this and posted it on my um, Instagram page and a lot of guys were saying, what a colossal waste of space or you missed an opportunity, you could have put drawers down there. Brother, I don't want drawers down there. I, it's getting hard for me to pick up things off the ground. The last thing I want is to stoop down on the ground and pick something off. So I'm raising everything up to my elevation. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to live in a two-story house. I want to live on a one-story house. That's just the way it is. You got you to uh, you change your way of thinking and adapt your environment uh, to suit your, uh, your declining years, right? Interesting or fun, fun fact, I was thinking... I like this because it's, it's, it's definitely very permanent, but it's also not, right? If you needed that cribbing, let's say uh, when your house is damaged from the first federal drone strike, you might be able to use it to prop up your foundation. Uh, you could pull those screws out. That's what's so nice about building with those screws is you can, if you change your mind, you can repurpose things. As I was putting that together, it reminded me of a story. So the old pioneers back in the day, as they were pushing out west of St. Louis, they would uh, build a small structure, like a small log cabin, or just cobble something together, install their family, and, they, and, and, and keep pressing west, le leapfrogging. But their families would stay behind. You know, These are the times of Daniel Boone and stuff. Can you imagine you take your wife with your seven kids, and you build this one-room little uh, 20 by 10 cabin, and you say, well, honey, I'll see you in 18 months. Good luck with the winter. <laughs> but that's what they did, right? But the, the thing that I was thinking of is when they went to move, uh, some, some of those guys would burn down the structure that they built yeah, so that they could sift through the ashes and reclaim all of the nails because those nails were handmade by a blacksmith and they were very valuable. And that's what they would do. They'd sift through those ashes and, and put them in a can or whatever and take them with them and reuse them on their next project. All right, here's the recap. Bottom drawer, all of the hand planes and shapers. Second drawer, auger bits, draw knives, hand lades, hand uh, routers. 
sauce. I couldn't get my big Japanese saw in. I, I put it over with uh, an axe rack. That's fine. These are the ones I primarily use on the bench anywhere. Anyway. Hand tools. Measuring. and my good knives. <laughs>